Hi everyone, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm really excited to have you here with me today for my new discovery in terms of more youthful looking makeup. And I will tell you this is probably not new to everyone, but for some reason in the past I have really hung on to really heavy makeup from probably the 90s. That was a time where I wore a lot of eyeliner, I had dramatic eyeshadow, I usually wore reddish lipsticks, very dark lipsticks, a lot of blush, and for some of us, as we get to be more mature and get to be more grown up, we kind of forget that less really is more as we age and that we have to follow the trends in makeup. And I have two very young women in my family. I am so happy about this. Emily, who is my son Colin's wife, and she's like 31 years old, and she hardly ever wears makeup, and her skin is just beautiful. And then Melanie, who is going to be marrying my other son Dylan. Yay, they will both be married. I'm so excited but she almost never wears any makeup and she looks wonderful. I think it's fascinating that the young women that I know don't really have the same reliance on makeup that I do because I was born in 1958, so I started wearing makeup maybe in the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s, and ever since then, I have always thought every day you need to wear a full face of makeup. I never really got into the natural look at all. But here's what happened. And this video is about more youthful makeup for us more mature women, including me. What happened is that I shot a video about two weeks ago and I thought I looked fine. Well, when I went to edit that video after about another week, I looked at it and I was horrified because I realized how very aging my makeup was. And we all hear that we should lighten up, but it takes something like that to hit you in the face and really make you finally do it. Because it is kind of hard to teach a more mature dog new tricks. Let me show you the photo that did it. And this is the thumbnail, and look at me in the picture on the left. It is crazy overly made up. And there I am on the right with the more youthful makeup that I will be showing you today. And it is amazing the difference between the two pictures. In fact, when I saw those two pictures side by side, I thought the one on the left could be the mother of the one on the right. And yet they're both me. So let's look at those pictures one more time and I'll tell you the areas in which I'm going to be improving the makeup and then I'll show you how I did it. Okay, as I mentioned before, too much shimmery shadow on the eyes the eyeliner is way too dark, probably don't even need that eyeliner. The false eyelashes really aren't doing me any favors. For some reason, when I apply false lashes, they really don't look as good as my normal lashes because my normal lashes curl up with mascara, but the false ones tended to stick straight out. And as you can see in that picture, they don't really look very glorious for someone wearing false eyelashes. Now the foundation overall is another area that I changed. That was my favorite foundation called Too Faced Peach Perfect Foundation but it looks heavy and cakey and look at all the fine lines and wrinkles. And I will say that neither of these pictures are touched up at all because usually in a thumbnail you could touch it up a little bit. Everyone does, but I did not do that in these so you could really see what was going on. Now in terms of the blush, the blush on the left is too rosy, whereas the blush on the right is more of a natural peachy shade. And the lips on the left are heavily outlined versus the ones on the right where the lip liner pretty much totally matches that lipstick. And then look at the forehead there where I've used too much bronzer and my face almost looks like it has a mask up there. Although I will say I do have some pigmentation up here, but I'm fighting it with the Obagi skincare system and I will be posting my first 30 days of Obagi experience video. And oh my, it is really improving my melasma. I am so excited to show you that video. And if you're not a subscriber and you'd like to see that Obagi before and after video with great before and after pics, and when you click the bell, you'll get an email of my future videos. And if you could give this video a thumbs up and or share it with a friend, that would be great too. Okay, one last thing about the before and after pic that I wanted to share with you is that everyone wants me to curl my hair. I always hear that. But my hair really doesn't curl very well because it is quite damaged from my being a blonde. And as you can see in that picture on the left, my hair just looks rather damaged. And then on the right, I am using hair conditioner twice a week, like a deep conditioner, and it is turning my hair from the straw that it is on the left to really much nicer hair that it is on the right. Okay, here I am up close and personal. Now I'm going to show you my lighter touch makeup and the key here is being natural. So instead of my normal full coverage foundation, I'm using this IT Cosmetics CC Cream SPF 50, which is good, in the color light. I go between light and medium in this, and for some reason I just like my skin a little bit lighter. Just take a little bit there. I'm looking in the mirror over here. Just put a little bit more towards the center of your face. 
just a little bit down on the neck. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this very grungy Urban Decay All Nighter. I've used this for months and spray it on this little brush. This is a fabulous brush, by the way. I cannot remember the brand. What is it? It is a Real Techniques brush and it just really does a beautifully smooth foundation. I used to use a flat kabuki brush, but I found that over time, as that brush got a little bit more dirty, it made streaks on my face. And as you can see, this does not. It makes absolutely smooth, gorgeous foundation. Let's see if I have any little streaks in there. You do need to always check in a magnifying mirror to make sure everything is very nicely blended. And I take the foundation onto my eyelids because I have red eyelids. As you can see, this CC cream just lets your real skin show through. And as we get to be more mature, more grown up, I think that really does help us because younger women have a natural glow and we don't want to cover up our glow at our age. We want to bring it out. Okay, there's the foundation. Now I'm going to go in with a little concealer and this is the Milani Conceal and Perfect. And I'll put all of this makeup down below in the description section under the video. I'm going to put a little bit of the concealer on my eyelids too. A little bit around my nose because I have some broken capillaries. And then there on my chin because I have a little bit of a divot in my chin. Here we go. We're just going to smooth that in. Just kind of make it look like it is part of our face, not makeup out of a tube. And then see how that just beautifully covers up the eyelids, that redness in my eyelid just kind of goes away, makes a nice even canvas, which makes us look younger when our eyelids aren't all veiny and red and crinkly looking. And I have a video coming up about a lactic acid peel I'm going to be doing on my eyelids. And I think that should be really interesting if you, like me, suffer from a little bit of crepiness there because it is really supposed to thicken up that eyelid skin and get rid of the crepiness. And it's known to be very, very safe and easy to do. I ordered that and it's coming in the mail and very soon I will do that video with the eyelid peel. Now I always have these little blue veins under my eyes and I'm using a little Dermablend stick, concealer stick in the color light. I have used this for literally years just to brighten up this under eye area. I really, really like it. There we go. And I'll just kind of pat that in with my fingertips. The heat of your fingers just really helps blend that concealer in so it doesn't look so cakey. Even though this Dermablend is a very high coverage concealer, it really never gives me a problem with emphasizing fine lines and it doesn't look thick. It just looks very nice and skin-like under there. Kind of pat it to make it look even more skin-like. Okay, now I'm going to go in on these dark circles here that I have with this L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Correcting Concealer in Peach. And I'll show you the darkness there and see how that just covers that up. There we go on this side, a lot of darkness there. And this peach corrector stick is beautiful for any place that you want to bring up a dark line. Got a little dark line here. Got kind of a big bag there. That one doesn't cover up too well. I'll go ahead and use a little here. Although that's a big bag and it doesn't tend to cover up very well. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my favorite powder. And unfortunately, I think this one is out of stock now. I think Chanel stopped making this. And so I'm going to be switching back to the Laura Mercier translucent powder, which if you have that at home, it's absolutely beautiful too. And this is their Powder Universal Libre in the color translucent. And I'll just take a tiny bit of that and put it there. Just a little bit, the smallest bit. We don't want to create heavy foundation on our skin with our powder. So we really just want to shake that off and just lightly dust in the mid portion of our face just to get the shine off. I am still oily after all these years. I still had pimples up till I was 60. So I have very, very oily skin, which is an advantage in a way because it doesn't tend to wrinkle as much, but it can sag because it tends to be thicker skin and the pores can look very large. So there is how that powder looks. And let's refer back to our picture and look at what we're going for. We're going for more of a dewy finish in the right picture there, and that's what we're going to head for. So I'm going to go ahead and do the eyebrows, and I don't do a lot to my eyebrows. I just brush them up. Also gonna get those eyelashes while I'm here. Just get them all in place. Then I've been absolutely loving this Pure Arch Nemesis Brow, and I guess it has a little brush on it, so I could have used that. So you just take that. It just has a little triangular tip on it, and so I'm just going to add a little bit at the very beginning of the brow. 
I don't add a lot. And then just a little bit on the tail. I've been trying to grow my tails, but they're still a little bit weak. There we go. So now I have tails and I'm going to use this NYX Control Freak to put my brows in place. And this is just like hairspray for your brows. And it really does make a difference to keep your brows set all day long. Now let's go into eyeshadow. And I've really been liking this Too Faced Natural Eyes palette. And it is mostly mattes. They have an all matte one and I could not put my hands on it. I'm going to use this light color in the upper brow bone area on both sides. Does have a little bit of fallout, but these colors are so nice and natural. Too Faced makes beautiful shadows. Then we're just going to take it down to this part of the eye, just the inner corner of the eye. And then we're also going to kind of link it there a little bit. Do this inner corner here. Just brighten it up, make your eyes look a little more widely spaced, a little more awake. Speaking of awake, I did not sleep well last night at all. I tried a new supplement called GABA, which is supposed to increase human growth hormone, which is a truly youthing hormone. And I'll be doing a video about that because it is amazing. The benefits of human growth hormone or HGH, and you can actually increase it naturally without going to doctors and paying 12,000 a month and doing something that is really questionable for your health. So it is great. And I can hardly wait to share that with you, but I took that GABA supplement last night and oh my, I was awake all night long. It was terrible. The things I do for my ladies. Okay, let's go ahead and use this lighter brown color in the crease. Just very nice and light. Just kind of windshield wiper motion there. Then we'll do a little bit of a circle on the outside. There we go. Do the other side. For my crease, I would have normally used this color all over the crease, but I've realized that if we go a little bit lighter, it makes us look a little bit younger, a little bit fresher. A little bit of a circle motion there. Now we are going to take a little bit of this darker, which is Cashmere Bunny. We're just going to put it right in that outside corner, just to give a little bit of drama. Just a little bit. Whoops! Went to the light one again. This is that Cashmere Bunny. This is a beautiful brown. They've had this in several palettes, and I can see why, because it is a lovely, lovely neutral color. Now, let's take a blending brush and really blend this out. And this is something I was not doing. And you just really need to do that because you don't want big chunks of dark color. You want everything to blend beautifully. See how that just blended everything together? Go over to the other side. Start in the darkest area, which is the outside. Now we have a matte eyeshadow look on our eyes totally, and I do like a little bit of shimmer in the middle. So I'm going to be using the Charlotte Tilbury Color Chameleon in the color Champagne Diamonds. I really, really like this, and you'll see what it does. It just gives the smallest little bit of brightness at the inner corner. I just think it's lovely. So that's how that looks, and you can kind of pat it out. And then I'll do the other side. And I'll pat that out. Blend that in with that brown. So you're going from the lightest color in the middle to a medium color and a darker brown on the outside. Now this is the Pure On Point Eyeliner, which I've used for months. I absolutely love this one. It's in the color Down to Earth, and it has a wonderful little self-sharpening tip. And I will never buy another eyeliner again that does not have a self-sharpening tip because I don't tend to sharpen. Now we're going to do a little bit of a half waterline here on this side, and then we're going to do a full waterline along the top instead of doing eyeliner. Because we just want it to look like our eyes look great, not like we have a big band of color. See how that made the lower lid a little bit darker than this side? Let's go ahead and do the top. This does feel weird, I have to admit. Especially when you have contacts like me, do a little more. And I'm pretty generous with this because it's a very subtle change, even if you put a lot in your waterline. So that eye has the waterline. This eye does not.
Okay, both eyes now have the liner in the waterline, but I do realize that I have red snake eyes. So take a look at them because I'm going to run in the bathroom and use my Lumify and come back. So here we are pre-Lumify and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back and these are the whites of my eyes using Lumify. And really Lumify is one of the best anti-aging tips out there because truly I look about 10 years younger than I did before I added those whitening eye drops. They work absolutely beautifully and there's no bounce back of red. You don't have to keep using them and my eye doctor even recommended them. So apparently they are really effective and really safe. Okay, let's get back to this. And the next step is that I will apply my mascara and I'm using this wonderful Thrive Cosmetics mascara and it really does look like lash extensions. I'll show you my lashes right now before and then I'll curl them and come back with this mascara on and I think you'll be amazed. Okay, I'm back and I have that Thrive Cosmetics mascara on and it's a tubing mascara so it really just coats each individual hair. It looks rather natural but with a little bit of glam, not as chunky as the mascara that I used to use, but I really, really like this and I'll give you a tip on application. About three weeks ago, I started experimenting with false eyelashes. And so I thought, well, if I just use them every day for two or three weeks, I'll get the hang of applying them. And I did, and my mind was kind of like, every YouTuber should wear false eyelashes. And so I was doing that, and I realized that for some reason, when I applied them, they would be straight, and actually just using mascara seemed to make my eyelashes look better. And I also realized that as we get older, we should not look as if we're trying so hard. The ideal look is that we rolled out of bed, took a quick shower, ran a brush through our hair, and hopped out the door. Just very, very natural, especially as we get older. And you know, I am thinking that a boho look works very well as we get to be more grown up. And I've always kind of wanted to end up with a boho look, maybe with long gray hair. Well, maybe, maybe with long blonde hair. I'm not sure I will ever let my hair go natural. But you know, the boho look just is natural makeup, kind of natural looking clothes. It looks like you didn't try too hard and I think it's a great look for us as we get to be more grown up. Well, anyway, when I was doing the false eyelashes, I realized that I needed a little small magnifying mirror. Got this one at Walmart and it has regular size mirror here, very grubby, and then a magnifier here and you just set it on your counter and then you look down in it to apply your false eyelashes. Well, I realized that if you really want beautiful mascara that looks like false eyelashes, that's very perfect looking, you really need to take a lot of care with your mascara. I used to just slap it on and I'm really just brushing the mascara on every lash. And between coats, I use this Tweezer Man metal eyelash comb to pull those lashes apart and to make them look separated and yet long and really nice. This is an absolutely beautiful little tool. I had it for a couple of years and then I broke it and didn't replace it for a while but I just got it again maybe a month ago and I'm so happy that I did. Okay, before we go on from here, let's take a look at our picture again. That before one is just ungodly terrible, but there's the after picture. And so we're through the eyes, through the mascara on that. Now it is time for blush. And I realized that all through my YouTube career, I have been attracted to the color that I like, which is a fuchsia -y pink, but it is actually pretty terrible looking on most people's cheeks, unless you're a brunette and that fuchsia color looks natural on you. It does not look natural on me. So I have to go to more of these peachy colors, which quite honestly don't excite me in the pan. You know, I would never go, ooh, that is a beautiful color, but it really does make a very natural cheek. And that's what we want is natural, not fuchsia, wow, wow cheeks. We want the look that we just came in from the cold and we're just blushing beautifully, kind of like our younger daughters or our daughter-in-laws would look when they throw on a sweatshirt, not much makeup, pull their hair back and jump outside and do some sports thing. They come in and they're all flushed. It's a beautiful look. Okay, I'll go ahead and apply some of this and really tamp it off. Everybody says do it on the apples and maybe if you're young, you can get away with that. But when you're a little more mature, when you do it on the apples and you don't smile, the apple part just hangs. And so you end up with blush down around here, which is not a good look. So we really want it to be from the middle to the tops of the cheeks. So let's just go here and we're just going to pat it on. There we go. Then we're going to do the other side. Just a little bit there, pat it on, mostly the top of the cheeks, top to the middle. So those are the cheeks and they're really very natural with a subtle blush. And since I have a large forehead, I always like to put a little dot of blush right up in the middle. 
just because I think that brings it together. I always like to do that in high school because it just felt like it brought the blush colors to a triangle, which is always nice. Now it's time to add a little bronzer and highlighter, and I've been loving this Charlotte Tilbury Superstar Bronze and Glow Palette. And here is the very natural brown they have. And just really tap that off, and you're just going to go not any further than the iris of your eye. Just keep it back. Do the other side. And I tend to have a very wide face, so this step is very important for me if I want to look a little more sculpted. Now we'll take a little bit more of that and go down the sides of the nose. This is a super natural color, and if you don't have this, I would totally recommend that you get this. It is wonderful. Now we're going to do along the cheekbone, because that really sculpts the cheekbone. It's almost like a little three here, because then you're going to go up. The top part of the three is right here. And I need to be careful not to overdo this. Okay, there's the bronzer. Now I'm going to get a little highlighter brush and go into this highlighter. And it is super, super, super natural looking. You can hardly tell it's there, but that's really what you want. Leave the strobe highlighters for the 18 year olds with the tattoos. We may have tattoo occasionally, but we should not have very noticeable highlighter. I don't think it does us favors because we have so much more texture on our skin. Do a little bit on the cupid's bow. Okay, that's the end of the highlighter. Okay, now we have everything but lipstick and I'm going to go in with a very nice nude lip. This is a L'Oreal lipstick called Fairest Nude. I think it's a color riche. There's that color. It's a little bit of a brick colored nude. And as you can see, I wear it a lot. Now, as you can see in the before picture, I used some pretty dark lip liner with that lipstick in the before picture, and I don't like it. So I really want to be more natural looking and match my lip pencil to my lips. And this is the Milani lip pencil in the color All Natural. Sounds like it would be natural. And I'm not going to go clear out to the outside of my lips because I don't want to look like a clown. Then I'll just take a little on the bottom. Okay, that's the finished lipstick and lip liner. Now I'm going to go into this Generation Plump and Shine from Catrice, just a little bit in the middle, just a little beigey highlight, which just gives you a little bit of glow. And you know, when I was applying that natural blush a few moments ago, I had kind of a flashback to junior high school where if you looked in the mirror and you didn't look like you had enough blush on, you would just pinch your cheeks and let that blood rush to the surface and you would look a lot better. So friends, that's a look at my anti-aging makeup. And from now on, shoot me if you see me on camera with all of that heavy pancake looking makeup and all that drippy eyeliner and false eyelashes. Because really makeup is supposed to just enhance our natural looks. It's not supposed to be a mask as I think I was wearing it a lot in the past. I think in the second half, one of the beauties of the second half is that we learn to accept ourselves, the good things and maybe the not so good things. And one of the best things that we can do in terms of our makeup is to lighten up and let the real us show through. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.